coming up on The Amazing Art Show, Mexican-inspired Cactus Still Life. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam, and today we are doing some Mexican-inspired cacti still lifes. So if that isn't a mouthful, then get ready for our list of supplies, because it's big. Um, let's go over what we're going to need. Um, you're, the only things that are kind of weird, I'm going to cover those first. Um, you're going to need some baby oil. So um, those of you that have younger siblings, babies, you're going to have plenty of this around the house. Um, if not, it's really cheap. You can get some anywhere. And you'll need some Q-tips that you're going to be applying that with. You will need some kind of a water paint. Um, we're also going to need some colored pencils. And you're also going to need some oil pastels. Obviously, water and brushes for those. Um, black Sharpie pencil. And then you're going to need um, a white sheet of paper, and I've cut this one down, I'm trying to remember now what it was, um, but it's not quite as, it needs to be small enough that you can put another piece of paper behind it that's going to be bigger. So just trim it down as you need to. Um, and so you're going to need one piece that is white, that is a little bit smaller, and then you're going to need another piece that is going to be white, that is going to be a little bit bigger. Okay? So you'll have so if you can see here, I've got the two, and they're just slightly, one slightly smaller than the other one. Okay? Um, and that's pretty much it. So I think that we are ready to roll. So let me kind of go over with you my, my inspiration for our project. Um, I've been seeing, I'm kind of here, there, and everywhere, these succulents are being like really popular right now, and so you see them. They are like in old shoes and they're growing them everywhere and that kind of got me thinking and then I'd also been looking and seeing like some art that I'd seen, you know, on the internet and it was all of cactuses and I was like, that would be a really good project. So um, that's what we're working on today. And so I pulled, um, this is my plant off my desk in my classroom um, and then these are just some images that I pulled um, to look at and so to kind of have some ideas to go by for color and shape. And then these are some photographs that I took when I went to New Mexico. And, um, and this one right here is going to explain my next point that I need to make. Um, what is the difference between a succulent and a cactus? And so a cactus has these little, the little stickers that come off of it, it grows out of the pad. But on a succulent, the stickery part or the prickly part is actually part of the pad itself. So like for this one, these on the end would be kind of prickly, but it's on the leaf itself. It's not an extension of it that comes off and grows out of it, if that makes sense. And um, so that's kind of the main difference. And you're gonna be doing a little bit of both today. And it's kind of up to you to decide and pick and choose, you know, what you would like to put um, in your bowl, basically. So, um, speaking of, we're going to be starting on the bowl part. So, um, I mentioned to you earlier that we were doing kind of a Mexican-inspired um, project. And so, I want you to start with your bowl, and we're going to put a pattern on it. So, we're going to make it look very uh, mexican ish kind of pattern. So think about geometric shapes, um, lots of lines, think about the colors that you might see. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't know what kind of colors they would have. They very bright, vibrant um, colors. So kind of think about, you know, reds and greens and blues and turquoises and oranges and yellows. Think about, you know, maybe think about your favorite Mexican food restaurant. Usually you'll see lots of bright colors there. So your bowl, We'll start there, and a lot of times when my kids start drawing their bowl, they automatically do a line across, and then they kind of connect it and make the bowl. But we want this bowl to be round in shape, so we want to create that kind of a look. So by doing, by having a line that curves here at the top, 
instead of one that is straight across, we're going to end up creating that look of it being a round, a rounded shape. Okay? And so we're going to draw that out. And you can make your pot look any way you would like to. It's kind of up to you on that part. But I do want you to make sure that you add, you know, lots of really good patterns. So um, same thing if you plan on doing anything, any kind of a decoration that goes horizontally across. You don't want it to go straight across. You want it to have that curve to it. So that curve will give it the illusion of being rounded. So I'm just going to come in here. Zigzags or like a chevron pattern is pretty popular. And then I'm just going to add some lines down here. All right, and then you're going to come in, and then that's when you're going to start drawing um, all of your different cacti and succulents. All right, so since the succulents are typically smaller, that's usually where I start. I start, a, you know, in a little bit of a smaller area. So kind of looking at this one and also, you know, kind of at some of my other ones that I was showing you earlier. I'm just going to kind of draw those out first. I'm going to do like a little spiky one over here. And um, one of the things in this project that is really important is that you want to have lots of layers. So make sure that you are overlapping your cacti and your succulents so that they don't look like they're all, you know, floating off on a little island all by themselves. But instead, they're going to all kind of grow like in a cluster. So some of them are going to overlap other ones. And then go bigger. So um, you can go, you can do like a saguaro, which is the one that, you know, kind of, the one that you think of when you think of a cactus. It goes up straight and it has the little arms. Um, the saguaro is, um, is a really good one. And I usually like to save that one for the back just because it's kind of big. But you can put it anywhere. So kind of think about um, those things. A couple things I want to mention to you is um, on your on your cactus, we know that like one of the main characteristics of a cactus are the little thorns. But I want you to resist the thorns because those are going to be like one of the last things that you add. When my kids started doing these at school, it was like they literally started drawing the thorns before the pot. <laughs> and so I was like, wait. So you, it's one of those things you want to kind of wait and do those towards the end. It's like a finishing detail. So, um, so don't do those first. Kind of save those. And then also, any empty space that you have left on, like inside the pot, you're going to actually kind of fill that with like a gravelly looking kind of um, substance. So like little rocks, gravel. And also, something else to think about, and it's amazing some of the colors and the shapes that you'll see on these, but the cactus also will grow different flowers on top that are like super bright, awesome colors. So kind of think about that and maybe consider adding some of those into your design. So I'm just kind of drawing out um, the cactus that I want to have, like a prickly pear. And then those usually have some pretty cool flowers on them as well and even fruit sometimes. And let's see, I think I'm going to do the Sora. Once you get done drawing everything, you're going to want to go in. <coughs> you're going to want to go in and add all of those lines that you see. So like we were 
you know, earlier we were looking at this one and you could see, you can see these lines. So you're wanting to go in and add those different, you know, lines that you might be able to see. Like, here's a really good view. You've got some lines right in there. So kind of keep those in mind and you want to add those before you come in and start adding all of the little spikes. All right, so I'm going to stop there. I've pretty much covered my, my area, my paper space as well as I can. So everything is pretty full. You don't want like itty bitty little baby cacti that are teeny tiny small. You wanna, wanna really work big. I'm gonna add something else in here because I don't wanna have to draw all that gravel so I'm gonna put a little plant there. All right, you're going to outline everything, okay? So by the magic of TV, we're going to jump to that step, all right? So I'm going to put this one over here, and now we've got our piece that we've outlined everything, okay? So now comes the, the fun part where you get to start adding color. And um, what I want you to do is you're going to actually end up doing colored pencil is going to be down on the bowl, and then you're going to be using oil pastel up on anything that is cactus related, okay? So um, keep in mind those really bright colors that we talked about. Um, you also um, might want to put something under here. My table's kind of bumpy. Um, keep in mind um, your colors that you're choosing. I want you to color really nice and dark and that that means if it's a colored pencil or if it's um, one of the oil pastels, I want you to color dark. Now the funny thing about this project is I'm always telling my students, you know, color dark, color it all in, make sure you get it all filled in. And actually on this project, because of the technique that we're, that we're gonna be using, you actually on the oil pastels don't have to fill in all the space, which is gonna make some of those kids like so excited because they totally don't see it. And I'm like, see that space in there? You gotta get it. But for this part, um, because of the baby oil actually, you won't have to be so particular about getting all of those little nooks and crannies. So we're going to, um, and also keep in mind, um, shading. So remember that objects that are, you might want to think about like which direction is the sun coming from, which direction is it being lit from, and then you're going to have shading on one side and you'll have one side be a little more um, lit or highlighted. Um, if especially since we're doing the whole concept of the round shape, you would have um, kind of here around these corners and these edges, it's gonna be a little bit darker since it's coming around. So you kind of want to emphasize that a little bit. So I would keep coloring and getting all my color on there for my pot. And I'm, once again, I'm gonna be using the colored pencils to do that, okay? Now I want to talk to you about the, um, I'm gonna move to the next one. All right, so now we've got pots done for the most part. I'm actually gonna come back in with my marker. I'm gonna be doing black marker in these areas that you still see white. Um, but up here, I've already started with my oil pastels um, adding color. And so we're gonna continue with that um, process and like I said earlier this is one of those projects where you're gonna hear me say something that I hardly ever say and that is you don't have to be like super precise on getting the color exactly filled in so just kind of get the idea now the cool thing is is the oil that we are going to be using it basically is going, it's gonna make the oil pastels, which are already pretty oily, it's gonna make them even more oily and it's gonna make them very blendable. So what's gonna happen is, you know, the colors are gonna blend 
really well together. And so any, like if you're thinking about trying to do, you know, like instead of just getting a color like a purpley or a fuchsia color, you can actually mix that yourself, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to kind of do this last little bit here. And also while I'm working on this part, um, you'll notice that down, I, just to kind of show you what it looks like, um, this is like what I did for the gravel. So it's like just a bunch of these little small circles. And you can vary the size. So, you know, don't make them all the same. And don't make them so teeny tiny because you want to actually be able to go in there and add color to them. So don't make them so teeny tiny that you can't put any color in them. So kind of keep that um, in the back of your head as you are drawing them. And I know that's harder for some people than it is for others. Some people, they draw so small. And I'm like, make it bigger. Okay, now let's get to the fun part. Okay, so I've got my baby oil in this little cup here. And I've got my Q-tips and we are ready to roll on the fun part. Okay, you want to keep the oil as much on the oil pastels as possible. So try not to get it way over here because it's gonna kind of stain your paper. And we are going to cut it out, but there may be some little pieces in there where you can't cut it out quite that well and you don't want it to look weird. So. Um, kind of try to be careful and keep it on your, oh, you know what? Hold up. I got to color this really fast or it's not going to look right. I forgot to get some green down in here. Okay. Okay. So, um, you might want to do like a Q-tip that has greens and yellows on it. And then you might want to do one like for your oranges and reds and purples and things like that. Cause you don't want to use the same one cause it kind of gets all mixed together. So here we go. I'm going to start putting the oil on. And it doesn't take a whole lot. And it's actually, if you can, kind of less is better. So if you get like a big puddle of it, like I just did, try to pull it over into the other areas that you need. So like over in here, I didn't really get down into all those little spaces in between the succulent leaves, but this kind of smears it. So you just kind of take your Q-tip and it smears it into those little holes that you might have left. And it does a great job of, you know, you blend your, co your colors really well. And speaking of blending your colors really well, when you're doing a still life of cactus, you do not want all of your cactus to only be green. So you need to think outside the box and think about adding some other colors. So, and there are lots of different shades and tints of green. So you can do that as well. Um, you can also add, you know, yellow. You can add white to it, especially. And the other thing is, let me show you this too. Once you've put the baby oil on it, you can actually come back with the oil pastels and you can draw back over it again. And it, it still works pretty well. It kind of oils it, kind of oils it back up again. Um, so you, all you're going to do is you're going to keep going through and you're going to work on blending all of your areas. And if you've noticed, I kind of try to stay like in one, area at a time and then move on over to the next color so that you don't like want to go all across all here. You want to kind of stay somewhat linear. All right. Okay. So I'm going to move this one over to the side and grab my next one. Actually, before I grab my next one, I'm going to talk to you about this other piece of paper that I told you that you needed. All right. And mine has paint on it already. Okay, so this is what I want you to do on your other extra piece of paper. We are talking sunsets. This is a picture of the pier in Manhattan Beach where my uncle lives. And it just brought back fond memories. And so I was like, that's a pretty awesome sunset. So I decided I would print that picture out. Um, I want you to see 
all of the different colors that you see in here. There are pinks, there are blues, there are purples, there's yellow, lots of orange, some reds, even some white. So I want you to kind of keep that in mind because this is going to be the background for our pot, basically. So you're creating like a sunset in the background. And you're going to be using the paints for this. And there's really no rhyme or reason. Um, I'm going to start just because I feel like it. Oh, you know what? Let me put these down so I don't make a mess. And you're just going to kind of go, there is, seriously, you don't have to think about this too terribly much. And if you get the color on there and it's too light and you don't like it, you can just add a little bit more. Remember, the, the color is going to be more intense the less water you use. The more water you use, the lighter the color is going to be. And you could do just straight back and forth. Or if you want to kind of come in, I'm kind of doing mine like some kind of crazy clouds. So like I said, there's really like no right or wrong way to do this part. And you want to, and you can even take those colors and they can go up on top of the other colors a little bit. And you can work pretty fast. Um, something else that I was kind of experimenting on is if you, while this is wet, if you want to, you can actually get um, pieces of, oh, what am I trying to say? Like plastic bags like that you get for your groceries. You can actually get some of those and um, you can do a technique. I didn't bring any to show you. Actually, I have this bag. I'll use this. And if you kind of, it'll give you the idea. Kind of crumple it up and then lay it down on the color. And then when you lift it up, it kind of gives you an interesting effect. So play with it because it's really fun to kind of come up with, you know, your d different designs. And keep in mind, it's totally abstract. It is, there's no wrong or right way to do this part, okay? So you're going to take it, put it to the side. So I'm going to put this one over here. And then I'll bring in this one that's already dry. And I will tell you this paper, um, at least my paper did it. It wasn't a very heavy paper. My paper, once it dried, it kind of curls. So get mom or dad to um, iron it for you. And then it'll be nice and flat. All right, so then last step is you're going to, um, you've done all of your, the oil with the baby oil. And you've gone back in and added, I've added my black. I went in and I did my little pieces of gravel. And so the last little bit that I'm going to do is you're going to cut it out. So while I finish cutting mine out, I'm going to have you guys go to the quote of the day. An American dancer and choreographer, Twyla Tharp, once said, art is the only way to run away without leaving home. Okay, so I've finished cutting this out and I wanted to point out a couple things to you. When you're cutting out, because you're getting into these itty bitty little spots, sometimes it's kind of hard to get into areas. So you will leave a little bit of white left showing. Just go back with your Sharpie marker and just kind of clean up your edges. And then there may be some areas where you just can't get in there at all because it's just super teeny tiny small. And if mom or dad um, don't want to help you with like an exacto knife to get in there, you can very easily fix the problem. Like, let me show you mine right here. So right here, I didn't want to get in there and try to cut out that itty bitty little space. So I just got a little bit of my paint and I painted it orange and it's going to blend in just fine. We won't even know that it was there. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to now flip this over and you're going to be gluing it down to your background. And so you're just going to coat it with some glue. I'm going to use a glue stick, which I don't do very often, but I want it to lay down pretty flat. So 
this is a good way to coat it and not have little lumps and bumps. The hardest thing is just working fast enough before it starts to dry. Okay. All right, so I've got my background. It's painted, it's dry, I ironed it. And now I'm going to, at the very bottom, and I'm going to make sure I've centered everything, get it on there straight before I stick everything down. Bring that up. Okay. You can't see my little spot that I told you about. That's our secret. Don't be telling anybody to be flaunting that around everywhere. All right, and then the last thing that you're going to do, remember how we talked about the thorns? And I talked about their one, they were one of the things, the, like the last things that I wanted you to do. And you actually see how I'd already added some of the ones that were on like the main body of the cactus, but they also stick out off of the cactus, which we talked about at the beginning, like that's what makes it a cactus. So um, the last thing that I want you to do is I want you to come back on there and I want you to do some thorns that kind of stick out off of your cactus and that means on all of them so like just think and look for little places where you can make some little thorns stick off and um, remember that all of the thorns don't necessarily look exactly the same like these kind of look like little bumps so once you get those last little things done you are done and we are all finished Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of The Amazing Art Show. Now go out and make some amazing art.